on a mysterious island in the South China Sea. There is a fortress without walls, protected by an invincible army that needs no ordinary weapons. Welcome to the island of Han. A private world of exquisite pleasures. I have a funny feeling we're being fattened up for the kill. And sudden death. Warner Brothers presents Enter the Dragon. The first martial arts film produced by a major Hollywood studio. American star John Saxon is Roper. He escaped the guns of the underworld. I will find someone with whom you can fight. There's a point I won't go beyond. Now he must face the hands of death. Introducing U.S. Karate Champion Jim Kelly as Williams. He grew up in the streets and knew what it meant to fight for survival. Your style is unorthodox. It's not the art, but the combat that you enjoy. No winning. And starring Black Belt Hall of Fame, undisputed martial arts champion, and international film star, Bruce Lee. What do you know about Han? He lives like a king on that island. Totally self-sufficient. I gather you still don't have enough to bust up his operation. We know everything. We can prove nothing. We want you to go in there as our agent. His job is to find the secret of the island of Han and destroy it. Roper, Williams, and Lee penetrate the secret chambers of Han's evil empire where they meet the beautiful and treacherous Tanya. Mai Ling, exotic but dangerous. Su Lin, delicate and deadly. Roper, Williams, and Lee. Just when they think they've broken the secret of the island, they find there is no escape from the inscrutable Han. I knew I'd find you two together. If I hadn't, Elsa, I might have gone on playing it your way. You didn't know that. But you did plan for me to follow you. You've been drinking. I presume you think that if you murder me here, your sailor friend will get the blame. And you'll be free to spend my money. Well, dear, you aren't the only one who wants me to die. Our good friend, the district attorney, is just itching to open a letter that I left with him. The letter tells all about you, lover. So you'd be foolish to fire that gun. With these mirrors, it's difficult to tell. You are aiming at me, aren't you? I'm aiming at you, lover. Of course, killing you is killing myself. It's the same thing. But you know, I'm pretty tired of both of us. You know, for a smart girl, you make a lot of mistakes. You should have let me live. You're going to need a good lawyer.
That night, I would meet my husband for the first time. The one who would control my destiny. Decide whether I was happy or not. This one moment would decide for my whole life whether fear would rule, or I would. I decided. Underneath, I knew who I was. I promised myself never to forget. There have been a couple of roles where I've said no and have actually been convinced by the writer or the producer to take it on. In my mind, sometimes I close off a character because I'm like, oh, sweatshop. No, I'm not doing anything about a sweatshop. And yet, there are parts, depending on how it's written, where it's important to tell these stories. I just felt that it was more important to take the job and try to educate the people that I was working with and, and, and to get the experience of working. And I, I do have respect for people who, who felt like they needed to quit those jobs or not take those jobs. There's so limited opportunities for Orientals. Now they know that it doesn't have to be Orientals. They are Orientals, yes, but they don't have to be like a certain type of casting. Oh, she has to play this or that. Why can't she play other roles? I, uh, I don't mind playing parts that have a, a accents. Um, it just depends on, on the writing and the execution of it. But, but you need all of that. You need all the different sides. He lies. He has no business in the village at this hour. Uh -huh. He looks for his wife, Jade. Yeah, when I thought it was speaking in PG English or derogatory in some way, or I didn't agree, or I just didn't think it was right for me, I have. I have turned down roles. I know that they, they get very upset when they ask to be a, a butler or a, a, a maid or, or, you know, a villain or something like that. And as far as I'm concerned, I mean, Sir John Gilgood has played a lot of butlers. So, <laughs> you know, I don't see the point. Uh, I, I see the point in uh, doing the best job I can with the part that I'm given. Do you know what you want? I mean, from him. Respect. Tenderness. Then tell him now. And leave this lopsided house. Do not come back until we give you those things.
What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. You want food? What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Say it again. You want what? Food? Yeah. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Yeah, no name, but no war. Everybody knows war. Who? Yeah. What it is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Good job, you all. It ain't you all, it's y'all. 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 You sound like a karate movie, y'all. Y'all. Say it from right here with some soul. Y'all. 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 Let me show your goofy ass how to do this. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. Those films like Tea House of Dog Spoon and uh, Sayonara um, were uh, successful because they were part of the American experience. American GIs who uh, were stationed in Japan met uh, Japanese women and married them or had other post-war experiences in Japan. And these stories all reflected that American experience. You had soldiers that fell in love with Asian women and brought them home. And so this all of a sudden began to, to bring some conflict, some discomfort, some jealousies. After the war, um, people wanted to know about Asia, particularly Asian women, uh, in a more exotic way. And that's why I think those kinds of love stories um, started coming out. Male fantasy, I believe, was uh, part of the reason for films like Sayonara to be more popular. The whole idea of having this uh, subservient, sweet, beautiful Asian woman um, as your concubine or as your mate was uh, sort of appealing. I think those films are popular because American people like to feel that they have overcome the racism, that they have overcome the blind cruel prejudices and they no longer are that society. I think it's a slice of history almost and the, the, it had a certain charm. You know, in that generation too, I felt like life was a lot more innocent still and purity and, and I think that that appeals to the highest nature in us. When you don't know about something and it seems exotic, I think it can be very intriguing.